It's been an interesting season for lawn care. Coming out of last winter, the lawn was looking really nice and really green, and I was pretty happy with the progress that I'd made from last season. However, spring didn't last too long this year, and June came with a lot of rain, but also a lot of heat and humidity building in as well. And then July arrived and things got dry. We had a drought for most of July and a little bit of August, and my bluegrass that was looking okay turned into this brown that you see right here now and went completely dormant. So did the bluegrass survive, and what does it look like right now? You're about to find out. So this year I want to create a step-by-step -step guide for you to show you exactly what I do in the fall. So then next spring when winter is all gone and you're ready to get out into your yard again, things can look like this. So I've said it many times before, but fall is the most important time for cool season grasses. This one we're really going to build the actual lawn and get it prepared for next season and get it prepared to make it through all the stresses of summer next season. So really starting in the fall of this year is going to prepare us for next year. So the first thing you need to do after you come out of the summer season is really assess what kind of condition your yard is in. Now a couple months ago, I let my yard go dormant. Everyone kind of freaked out and said, oh man, what's going to happen, Ryan? Well, let me show you what happened. So I won't lie to you that there were parts of the summer where I thought, hmm, maybe this isn't going to go so well. But because I know Kentucky bluegrass is a really resilient grass, I wanted to kind of show you this. For those of you who don't have irrigation or for those of you who can't put the amount of time into your yard that maybe I put into mine, I kind of want to show you that, let's say that you let your lawn go dormant in the summer and you just maybe it was by accident or maybe things just got ahead of you. Whatever the case is, it doesn't really matter. But I wanted to show you that things will come back. So just from a bird's eye view there, you can see that things are looking really, really good, even compared to a couple weeks ago when I was still a little bit iffy about what was going to happen with it. And uh, we just had a lot of rain recently, which I've explained in a couple things when I've been talking about my lawn renovation. But if you've been getting a lot of rain, it's not going to take too long for this thing to kind of pop back. Now, if you haven't been getting a lot of rain, then I would suggest right now as the temperatures begin to cool, start to hit it with a lot of water and things should kind of revive themselves. So just the eye level view doesn't show us everything. Let's get a couple close-ups on a few problem areas that I do need to work on. So this area of my lawn over in this section has typically always been the best section for me actually of this backyard and really this summer it was looking worse than pretty much everything else around and so I was a little bit concerned about that part. I wasn't really sure what was going to happen with it long term when it came out of dormancy here. So let's take a little bit closer look at some of the problems over in this section. So I'd say this actually probably looks a little bit worse on camera than it actually is, but this is just some of the areas that were extremely dormant, that there's still some of that dead kind of dormant grass mixed in. So we'll be able to come in and dethatch most of this out of there and it's going to look fine. And all this stuff right in here, you'd be surprised how much bluegrass will spread and how quickly it will do that. So I'll show you that whole process, but, but from that eye level view, you don't see exactly all of this. It'll be okay with a little bit of time here, but I do want to show you in case you have some patches in your yard like this. Don't freak out too much, we'll be able to fix this. Here's an area right here where we got all that traffic from all the construction we were doing on our shed this summer, so that's thinned out a little bit more just from traffic. It's really not from anything else other than just the constant wear of that. So I will have to do probably a little bit of work on there, but you see how we kind of have a couple of little plants right through here? Once we start hitting that pretty aggressively with fertilizer, those things are going to spread pretty fast as well. I knew when we built our shed it was going to take a toll on the existing grass that I had there. So I tried not to freak out about it too much, but here's kind of what we're left with right here. So there's a lot of grass there that was pretty much taken out. And this whole section right here, this way, I'm going to end up fixing here this fall yet, uh, doing a little bit of overseeding there, which I will show you the process of that as well. So overall, it's very natural for the grass to kind of thin out 
and for you to see a little bit of that dead dormant stuff still mixed in as things are kind of getting back to our cool season here. Now it's still fairly warm here. We've still been in the 80s most of the time, sometimes upper 80s. So just because it happens to be September now doesn't necessarily mean the weather is cooperating with that, as most of you know. So don't necessarily look at the calendar, but look at what your temperatures are doing to kind of gauge how far along the lawn is going to be. So once it starts to cool down into the 70s for highs and you start to get some lows in the 50s, so that's when this yard should really start to thrive again. Right now, right around that Labor Day mark, I like to lay down some fertilizer. So most of you know I've been using Milorganite for a while now. So I have a pretty big stash of it here, but there has been a shortage this year. So what I'm gonna be talking about today with this fertilizer, if you have Milorganite and you wanna put some down, this would be a good time to do it. If you can't find any or you don't have any, we can use another fertilizer at this point. But if you are in your extreme warm temperatures yet where you live, if it's into the 90s still, I might hold off on this fertilizer just a little bit until you see those cooler temperatures starting to come in. Now with Milorganite, because the heat actually helps it to break down and we're not gonna have any risk of burning the yard with it, then right now would be a good time to put it down while we still actually have some heat left and while we can break that down a little bit quicker. In between rainstorms today, it's also a good idea for me to mow the yard. I've been back cutting this thing at three inches, uh, mainly with the Time Master here, so in between our rainstorms that we've been having, it's been growing like crazy, and so I need another cut today. So if you saw there, I also found a little bit of a mole problem in my yard. Now I've had this happen in my backyard, mainly outside of the fence a couple times before. I noticed it in my neighbor's yard probably a couple weeks ago that there were some little mounds coming up. And I found this little trench line now that's in my yard. Now luckily the ground is soft enough right now that I could kind of smash that back down. And uh, I'm just gonna have to keep an eye on this. I do have a mole trap that I've used before, but I've actually never caught anything. So this tells me that there's probably a little bit of grub issue going on in the yard. Now I put down grub preventer back uh, earlier this summer, sometime around June, middle of June or so. Right now it'd probably be a good idea for me to go get some kind of grub X or some kind of product that's gonna kill grubs. I use the preventative, but sometimes that doesn't get everything. I've noticed a few moths in the yard as well, which are usually sod webworms. So I'll do a little more further investigating on that, and hopefully things don't get out of control before I can get some kind of grub killer down. And by the way, I'm still really happy with the cut quality on this Time Master. So I know I've been getting questions about my long-term thoughts on this Time Master. I still love mine. It just looks fantastic, leaves a really nice, even, flat look to the yard. That's really all I can say about it. I still really like it. So if you're considering a mower, you have a little bit bigger yard, it'd be something that I would definitely consider. I don't think it's gonna show too much on camera here, but there's a line going right through here where they've been digging it up. I'll show you how you can just press it back down with your shoes if it's fairly wet in your yard right now. Yeah, so after assessing those little areas there, I did find a couple of white grubs. So I think that's gonna kinda decide that I do need to put down a little bit of grub killer. We'll talk about that in another video, but if you wanna get ahead of it, I'll try to link a product that I will be using down in the description below. So if you remember correctly now, I've not put down any fertilizer on my backyard since the springtime. So that was right around Memorial Day or so when I last put down some Milorganite on the yard. And of course I didn't do anything this summer because the grass was dormant so I wasn't going to just throw down fertilizer really for no reason.
So the most important thing when we're spreading fertilizer is just to make sure that we're getting good overlapping coverage, that we're also not walking too slow or walking too fast. So it takes a little bit of practice to kind of get your pace correct. So you can see here that I'm moving along at a fairly good pace, but I'm also not moving too fast or too slow. I'm also spreading so that my path is hitting the previous tire marks, and that way I make sure that I'm getting good coverage. It's kind of hard to see here because we're not on a super close up of what I'm seeing looking directly over the spreader. Just make sure that you're spreading towards that previous tire mark and you'll be getting good coverage. So that's step one in our fall lawn care series here. I hope you'll enjoy what's to come. I have a lot more videos to show you exactly what I do to my yard in the fall. Also, if you'd be willing to lend a little support to me and my channel, I do have merch available now, these t-shirts. Also some uh, lawn goals t-shirts that I have made. So check out my store in the description and also uh, there's a link here at the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching this one. We'll see you next time.